One of my other ideas was I've been betrayed, the body show. <laughs> um, <laughs> I took notes. I was thinking before, so for the body show, I was like, I should talk about high school because that was definitely the most dissociative I've ever been from this. And uh, I was like, what were my banner body moments in high school? Well, one, and none of them are like, I mean, the things of being in a blackout are not even, that's enough, well, anyway. So one of the things that are, as there was, I remember having this day where I decided, I was like kind of a punk hippie thing, which like in Wisconsin was a true hybrid, here it's just like the East Bay. But there it was, we're all weird too, we have to hang out and we'll go to Fugazi and we'll go to Grateful Dead, whatever. So, I was having this thing where I was like feeling weird about my body, so my logical step from that was, I'm gonna wear a pair of my jeans from junior high, these like, guest jeans super tight and like really I remember just doing the whole like basically what I think my mom does to this day to get her jeans on like lying down to me oh, you know oh, yeah. and then going to school in these super gross unflattering jeans and getting made fun of by all the people who totally ignored me otherwise but like actually suddenly the lights went on and they were like holy god she looks you know so that was a good one and then in my sophomore year in high school, Santa Rosa High, move. I had gym class and there was like a pool and it was outside and all these things that were different than being in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And um, I noticed that a bunch of the girls were wearing bikinis, but they're totally like, I don't know. When I say they were California ladies, you're probably like, so wait, you are what? You know, like a stereotype. But anyway, I remember pulling out this huge bikini that was like, and I had these huge boobs and just being all, oh God, you know, and, and getting out and um, <laughs> it just being all saggy and wrong and weird and going out and get like diving in the pool and the whole thing sliding down <laughs> in front of my gym teacher. So anyway, but the real, one of my total banner moments then was moving back to Green Bay and my friend Anina and I were really obsessed with this guy, Jim Knott. And we were, we were, you know, in our like high school depressed, whatever, pure one imports sort of like mindset. <laughs> At the time, you know, pure one was an outlet for people who felt weird in a small town and not just like, I moved into my condo in Emeryville, so I'm gonna go different or something like that. But, um, but so, you know, we, I would be like, what'd you do last night? She'd be like, I sat in my pop son and cried. <laughs> I'd be like, oh. Anyway, you wanna, you know, go drive your car or something. So we were obsessed with this guy, Jim Nye, who we assumed had the most amazing, like, rarefied. We had just decided that his life was so incredible and that we wanted to hang out with him, but of course didn't then just go hang out with him. Like we had to hate him because we wanted to hang out with him. And one time we're finally somehow, I don't even remember how, invited to a party at his house in downtown Green Bay. I mean, he was, I mean, he had, it was probably just like he had an angry pregnant girlfriend and five shitty jobs and a house in downtown Green Bay. Like why did we think he had it all? And when we were like, and our life is dumb because we're getting super drunk all the time, like, and stoned and pouring hot sauce in each other's drinks and laughing. Yeah. You know? It was, we were just as rarefied as he was. So, we get invited to this party, and it's in, like, some huge old house in downtown Green Bay, and it's super dark, and there are all these kids in there that I'm like, it's, this is so cool. I feel cool. And finally, it's a nice house where I've always felt I was meant to be with her, and so we kind of split up at some point, because I'm already, we arrived there, and I'm already like one leg in a blackout, and so I'm walking around <laughs> and stuff, and being like, go upstairs and see what's going on, and I'm just feeling like, confident. I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna talk to people, and it's all gonna be so normal, and so I go, I see this room, and there's the shape of, you know, a lamp, but it's, so I go, and it's a huge hookah, and there are all these people sitting around it, and so I lived in Santa Rosa that year, so I just adopted the most <laughs> intense, what I thought was a California accent, but was so just like, past the surfers, past the valley girls, just like some, basically a drunk, dumb teenager doing an imitation of what she thinks California is. Yeah, you know, you know. And just being so super lame and talking to them about, I don't know what, in that accent, and then, the hookah, nobody's smoking from it, and I was like, well, I am, and just
just said, I mean, it's not lit, nothing's happening, but I was just like, pose, 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 why is it not working? Pose, pose, pose. You know, like wrapping myself around the hook and being like, ah, why? And nothing's happening. And finally, and I hear people talking to me, but I'm so laser focused on the fucking hookah that I finally hear someone be like, it's cash. There's nothing in it, and I've just been sitting there with them watching me, like, trying to get the hookah going. And then I look over to my left, and there's a mirror on the wall, and I realize that we're sitting under a black light, and it's highlighting the cover-up on all my zits. <laughs> so, felt good. And I just felt like, go for a home run now. You know, I just made like some super dumb joke about about how I didn't know how to put on makeup, even though clearly I really did and in, a, in abundance. And, uh, and what I, you know, I don't know how I got home or what. So I was thinking, so there's like, you know, those are obviously vanity moments. And then I was thinking, what by contrast would sort of typify where I'm at in my body without talking about things like massages and sports. And I was coming home the other night from Kvetch that I host, and it was like midnight, and my neighborhood's totally quiet, there's no one around, there's nothing happening. And I open the back door to my car, and I'm grabbing out this video projector, and I don't even hear anything, and it's not like, you can't really see me from outside the car, because I'm inside the doors, like maybe my feet are sticking out, but my heels. And I turn around, and these guys have driven up and kind of sandwiched me next to my car. There's probably like three feet between their car, and they're going in the wrong direction, so they're kind of clearly trying to hem me in and stuff. And just, I felt no concern or fear or anything. I just turned around, and it's like a car full of teenagers, which everyone knows teenagers are the fucking worst people on the planet, you know? <laughs> and there's like five people in this beautiful big caprice and all this, and I turned around and was like, hey guys! And just kind of looking in there and was like, oh, he's the cute guy driving. <laughs> you know, just, what? What's wrong with my brain? And, um, and they kind of, I don't know if they were caught off guard by that or why the sort of like rip in the time-space continuum happened right there. And we stood there, or I stood there and they sat and we're all, and finally I was like, Bye guys! And like turned around my heels and kicked back over to my house and everything was fine. So that's it, it all turned out okay. Woo.